Hi, my name is Mayanti Fernando. I'm the interim provost of Colleges 9 and 10. Um, as provost, I oversee the academic aspects of college life, which means that I oversee uh, CORE, which all frosh take, um, other academic courses, and academic advising. Um, I got my PhD in anthropology from the University of Chicago, and I came to Santa Cruz in 2008, uh, where, and I'm faculty in the Department of Anthropology. As you can see, my mask keeps slipping. Um, we are obviously in a very strange situation, and you should all be here instead of watching this video, but unfortunately, we are in COVID times. Um, I have been involved in Colleges 9 and 10 since I got here, uh, but just as a faculty member. Um, this year, however, as I said, I'm interim provost, and I'm very excited to be here. I'm gonna turn it over to Sarah. Thank you, Mayanthi. We're excited to have you too. And my name is Sarah Woodsidebury, and I use she, her, hers pronouns, and I am the Senior Director for College Student Life here at College 9 and College 10, which means that I get to co-lead the colleges with my auntie. As she oversees the academic side, I get to oversee the sort of student life side. So everything that happens outside of the classroom is within my purview. Everything from orientation to graduation, residential life to student leadership opportunities, and everything in between. So. I get to work in the field of my study. In fact, I uh, graduated from Colorado State University with a master's degree in student affairs and higher education. And prior to that, I did my undergrad at the University of California, San Diego. And San Diego and Santa Cruz are actually sister campuses to one another in that we're both part of the UC system, obviously. We also are both research one public institutions, but have the benefit of these really small unique living and learning communities that are the colleges and the colleges really offer an opportunity for students to engage with coursework and outside of the classroom work so co-curricular opportunities so to speak that relate to the theme of that college and we're going to be talking about that soon but i have to say that both as a student and now as a staff member in this college system i think you all made the best choice and we're so excited to welcome you here to uc santa cruz whether it's in person or virtually we're thrilled to have you and we do want to just acknowledge the strangeness of this situation, the fact that we are doing this introduction via video. We realize that, you know, in normal circumstances, you would be here, we would be in a big room together, um, and this would be very different. But um, unfortunately, we are living in just what seems sometimes like catastrophic times. Um, and, I, and I do just want to acknowledge the strangeness of that all. Um, that being said, we are still really, really excited for this year. We're really excited to welcome you, even though it might just be virtually. Um, and what we're gonna do is, since I am um, in some ways as new to all of this as you are, I'm gonna, we're gonna do a kind of tour of the colleges where I ask Sarah questions um, and you know, Sarah will sort of lead the way here. So like my auntie said, we're gonna be offering this short video so you can get a sense virtually of the um, greatness of our colleges and all that we have to offer. And we wanna share with you a little bit about our space and the space that we, we get to occupy and, and we get to welcome you to hopefully soon one day. Um, and, and we wanted to just like also acknowledge that we do talk about our colleges as colleges, right? So we are college nine, separate from college 10, yet we are uh, linked by our themes and those themes really each of those themes do complement one another and we hope that our students are engaging with our two themes of our two colleges also engaging with us as staff members who work to support all of our students collectively um, we want to make sure that all of our students both at college nine and college 10 have all the resources and support that they um, need and it was intentional that these two colleges uh, were founded together about 30 years ago um, or not 30 excuse me 20 years ago um, and we wanted to ensure that the way that the colleges were intended was to allow for the shared administration to be able to support our students more effectively. So again, we're gonna be talking about each of our colleges separately, but we're also gonna be talking a lot about the things that we do together. So again, we welcome you here to College 9 and College 10. Welcome to College 9 and College 10. So as you can see, I've had a little bit of a wardrobe change. I changed my mask because the other one was slipping blue. Um, we are now standing in front of the murals of College 9 and the theme for College 9 is international and global perspectives. Sarah, could you say a little bit about the murals and also about the college theme? Absolutely. So College 9 was founded in the year 2000, actually before all of these buildings were even built. These, all these buildings came about two years later. Um, but College 9's theme of international and global perspectives 
came out of an interdisciplinary task force of over 20 years ago now that was really looking at emerging themes, primarily in the fields of social sciences, and really wanting our students to think and grapple with what they thought at the time were gonna be really compelling themes for then and into the future. And it turns out that's true. International and global perspectives really is a salient theme then and has continued to be throughout. And at College Nine, we really try to graduate our students as global citizens and really thinking about themselves, not only with their deep and rich histories, but also understanding those of others and thinking about themselves as a global citizen, as not just um, a community member here, but as a community member across the world and how their choices and our choices um, impact not only ourselves, but, but those uh, across the globe. And so as we're thinking about students and graduating them with the mindset of a global citizen, we're, we're wanting them to think more deeply both inside the classroom and outside of the classroom about what that theme really means. And the mural is a perfect example of that. And in um, several years ago, we invited a, a professional muralist actually to come help co-lead a class um, that was here um, at College 9 and College 10 to really allow students to think about what the theme of international and global perspectives means to them. And then think about those concepts, those words, those um, you know theories, those practices um, visually. And so the muralist helped our students to kind of figure out how to put those uh, concepts into a visual representation that has become the College Nine mural. And so it's it's an exciting um, you know sort of exemplification of that process of collective thinking of not only thinking about what that means for themselves, but how to understand that across difference. Um, and then to create um, a visual image of the theme. So that's a little bit about College Nine, our theme and our mural. So again, we welcome you. So Sarah, we are standing in front of the entrance to the community garden of Colleges Nine and 10. Can you say a little bit about the garden and also about other opportunities that students have to flourish um, that are part of college student life? Absolutely. So yeah, the garden actually was started in 2013 by a group of students actually who were interested in uh, developing this space into a more usable space so that students could grapple with the two themes of our colleges, international and global perspectives and social justice and community through a garden and really learning about issues surrounding agriculture, uh, whether it's food justice or sustainability, um, but to really be thinking about the garden as a space to learn more practical um, tools and resources uh, to engage with the themes of our two colleges. So our students um, sort of plowed the way, so to speak, to ensure that this space could become a space that they could not only um, be a part of the garden club, so you asked about clubs and organizations that, that students can get involved in, but they can be a part of the garden club or they can just come to events that are here in the garden, learn more about the themes of our two colleges through uh, those events and through those activities as well as through the garden club happenings. So this is a great space for students um, to get involved and as you can see a great space that students really spearheaded to ensure um, that its use could, could go on beyond what it was um, originally. And so I know that there are also other activities. Can you say a little bit about the Practical Activism Conference, the Multicultural Student Weekend, the Intercultural Student Weekend? It seems like there's all kinds of things that students can get involved in. Absolutely. So you don't have to be an outside person or in the garden to, to get involved here at Colleges 9 and 10, for sure. The Practical Activism Conference has been around for several years. In fact, um, it started um, by a collective group of staff and students to um, really, uh, again, further their understanding, our understanding of the themes of our two colleges. It's a day-long conference and students get involved quarters before to help plan it. Um, and then they work together with faculty and other community partners to put on a day-long conference with workshops that really delve deeper into the themes of our two colleges. And so that's an opportunity that students um, can not only take a course or be a part of the practical activism planning team, but they can also just attend the conference and learn about some of these issues through their fellow students and, and faculty and community members work. And then you, you talked about the two weekends. We have two weekend retreats that are focused on the themes of each of our colleges. So College Nine has an intercultural community weekend retreat. 
College 10 is the Multicultural Community Weekend Retreat. These are opportunities for students to get out of UC Santa Cruz and go away for the weekend with a smaller group of students led by fellow students. And um, they get to, again, think more deeply and more practically, think about more hands-on tools and skills um, that will help them to learn about the two themes of our colleges. And I also know that there is an alternative spring break. Can you say a little bit about that? Yeah, we have a super popular alternative spring break and has been for years. It's, it's been a part of our um, founding history and continues to this day. An alternative spring break is an opportunity for students to get away from UC Santa Cruz um, for the week of spring break. And the last several years, we've been partnering with our neighboring community of Watsonville to learn more about issues of food justice, for example, it really relates to community gardens, um, the, the premise of the community garden, uh, as well as other issues in that community. And so um, the group of students comes together and determines kind of what the, the course is gonna look like and how it is that they're going to um, participate in sort of projects or service um, that would benefit not only their own learning, um, but also benefit our surrounding community. Wow, amazing. And uh, other opportunities for student government? Yeah, yeah. So um, speaking of student voice and, and ensuring that the student voice is being heard, um, students can participate in either of our student senates or student governments. So we have a College 9 student senate and a College 10 student senate that really is the place for students to come together and voice some of their concerns and their ideas, as well as to decide on funding. Um, so the students pay into their college membership and that those funds are decided upon by your fellow students and by yourselves. So we, we, we look for students to participate in that way as well. Okay, and is there a place where, like where does one go to get more information about all of this? Yeah, so there's a ton. We could go on and on. We could stand here all day talking about all the opportunities just here at College 9 and College 10, not to mention UC Santa Cruz. But if you're interested in getting involved here at College 9 and College 10 outside of the classroom, and to hone your own leadership skills, we invite you to connect on our website. Uh, we have a whole section dedicated to getting involved and finding your community. And so we invite you to find your community outside of your classroom or your major experience so that you can get involved in some of our students' leadership opportunities. Thanks. Thank you. So here we are in front of the multi-purpose room or MPR, which is adjacent to and connected to our dining hall. So it's actually a place where students can eat um, but it's also the home of many of our events and activities, many of which I talked about earlier, um, are all hosted here. And so students um, engage with all those different clubs and organizations and all those different events and conferences right here in the multi-purpose room. And something that we also typically do here is we have we host the plenary sessions for our core courses um, are usually right here in the multi-purpose room. So really easy to access by our students who live right nearby. So I'm hoping, Mayanthi, that you can tell us a little bit about the core course for College 9. Sure. Um, so I will say first a little bit about core in general. Uh, it's officially called College 1, and all of the colleges offer this core. Um, it's in different, different ways because it depends on the theme of the college. Uh, but the core is really an opportunity for, for all frosh, um, and it is required of all frosh, to develop a common vocabulary and a common uh, way of being a, a university student, which is quite different than being a high school student. And so one of the main purposes of CORE is to um, cultivate what we call an academic ethos in our students. Um, and so, like I said, it's really, it's, you know, it's, students learn how to uh, critically read, they learn how to critically think, they learn um, analytical tools, they learn some methodological tools, and it's, it sort of provides a basic kind of, um, a basic vocabulary, uh, conceptual and analytical, that they can take with them no matter what major they do, no matter what other courses they take. So it's a kind of foundation course, and that's the main element of core. There's also a thematic element to core, so each of the, each of the colleges has a different theme. And, um, and so the readings, while they are teaching students this academic ethos, the readings themselves are thematically different across each of the colleges. Cool, so can you tell us a little bit more about the theme or the content of College 9's core course? Sure, so College 9's theme, as we said, is international and global perspectives. And so um, all of the readings for the core class have something to do with this theme. There are basically three focuses, three foci, 
Uh, the first is climate change. The second is the rise of authoritarian politics um, across the world. And then the third is the emergence of social protest movements, um, many of them led by young people, which I think is really relevant for CORE in particular. Uh, and so those are the three focuses for um, the College and I CORE. Can you tell us a little bit about the format of CORE? Sure. Um, yes. So the format is a little bit different this year because of COVID. So usually, um, obviously, students meet in person in sort of small groups. Um, and then they have, as you said, the sort of, you know, all of them come together in the plenaries in the multipurpose room. This year is a little bit different, obviously. There will be uh, both synchronous and asynchronous elements to CORE. Um, Students will meet either twice a week or once a week or three times a week, it depends on the instructor. There are different instructors for CORE, um, but they'll have an opportunity at least once a week to meet face-to-face, -face, even though it's remote, but to be face-to-face -face with their instructor and with the other students. And I really just want to give a shout out to the amazing instructors we have at CORE who just put in a tremendous amount of time and energy and effort to kind of reimagine what CORE can be and what CORE can do for this remote age. And so I think it's gonna be a very different experience than it usually is, but I think it'll be a really great learning experience and a really great bonding experience for all of our crush. Wonderful, thanks. Okay, so we're outside of Namaste Lounge right now, which is another popular spot for our students to gather. Um, it's also a place where we host a lot of events and programs. Um, and it's also this particular spot is one of the favorite spots of, of College Nine. Um, to have the nice picnic tables and the, the view of our redwood trees. Um, but I know earlier you mentioned about our incredible faculty and lecturers who work with our core course. And I know we have an equally incredible advising team. So I'm wondering if you can share a little bit, Mayanthi, about the resources, advising resources that are accessible to students. We do have a really incredible advising team. And so the other component, um, there are courses and core of, of you know, the sort of academic environment for colleges nine and 10, but the other component of academics here is the advising team. We have a phenomenal set of advisors um, and the advising team is really here to guide students throughout their academic career. Um, they're here to help students choose their major, they help students keep on track and make sure all of their general education requirements are fulfilled. Um, they are really a kind of resource for students uh, with regard to any sort of questions that they may have academically. Um, the, the advising team will be meeting with students remotely. Um, they are available for appointments, I believe, from Monday through Thursday, for individual appointments and uh, email contact from Monday through Friday. So even though we are in very strange COVID times, as we keep saying, um, we hope to have, you know, we, we will maintain uh, advising as a major kind of um, support anchor for our students. And I think it's worth keeping in mind that the advising team are really advocates for the students. And so when students and if students have any kind of concern about the academic part of their college experience, the advising team is really the first point of contact for them to go to. That's great. So we are standing in the residential quad of College Nine. Could you say a little bit about the residential experience that students have here? Absolutely. So we are in the quad. It actually only has three buildings. I guess a quad is typically four, but we have three residential halls for our College Nine students. And we're standing in front of Hague House and behind us is Geneva House. And then in this direction is Gandhi House. And these three buildings our residence hall, traditional kind of dormitory style buildings. So um, down the hallways, there's a number of rooms with a shared um, bathroom. Um, and, and usually in each of the kind of area or the quad, so to speak, there's at least one or two different study spaces that students can um, find to, to study. Um, typically in a non-COVID experience, typically uh, students are in triple rooms actually to start. Usually all of our first year students are in triple rooms. Um, and some doubles and there's a few singles, but now in COVID times, our students will be primarily living in single rooms, only in single rooms in the residence halls, just so that we have less people in each hallway sharing bathrooms, etc. cetera. So um, these will all be uh, basically assigned single rooms in the fall. And the other thing to note about uh, College Nine um, is that these buildings actually 
have numbers as well, R1, R2, and R3. And those numbers are the actual um, building names for the campus. But uh, many moons ago, a group of students came together and wanted to ask their fellow students uh, what names they would give our buildings as it relates to the theme of our college, the theme again being international and global perspectives. So there was a student uh, sort of election, so to speak, where they got to submit names and then people voted on these names. So each of them have kind of a history. And in each of the buildings, there's a mural dedicated to the theme or the name of the, each building. So um, that's kind of cool inside. And then also at College Nine, what I wanted to share is that we have um, theme floors or floors that are dedicated to a particular interest area or theme for our students. And at College Nine, given our broader theme of international and global perspectives, we have an I floor, a very popular international floor um, that goes by I floor. And it's a mix of international students and US students who have chosen to live on that floor, learn and grow from each other, build friendships across different nations. Um, and it really, again, it's a tangible way in which our overall theme comes to life for students. And so, so let me ask you a question. Yeah. So there are some students who are gonna be um, living in these residence halls even uh, this fall. Correct, yes, yeah. So even this fall, we'll have students in our buildings, way less than we typically do. Like I was saying, we'll only be, uh, one person assigned per room and not even every room on every floor will be utilized. And then we have lots of protocols around ensuring that people are sanitizing their hands when they go in and out of the buildings, um, that they're not filling up their water bottles at the, you know, joint filling stations, which are typically, a, a, you know, an added perk in our buildings. Um, but they'll be asked to fill those, um, not, not at those sort of communal stations, etc. And these are students who just couldn't say um, off campus for whatever reason. Correct, yeah. So the, typically the students that are gonna, that we're gonna find here this fall are students that don't have a home to go to or their living environment is potentially unsafe or not suitable for virtual education. And so they'll be um, living here and logging into all of their classes. So it'll be a very different experience than we're used to. Usually we're seeing a lot more students coming and going uh, to and from class, but there'll be a lot more um, people in, in their spaces um, taking advantage of the, you know, beautiful surroundings of the of their quad, um, but primarily staying in, in place. Yeah. yeah. So we're standing in front of uh, the dining hall that students use. Um, can you say a little bit? Obviously, things are going to be quite different now with COVID. Um, can you say a little bit about how dining is going to work and how other aspects of residential life, like what are the resources that are available to students during this time? Absolutely. Yeah, so folks that will be living on campus or our residents that will be living on campus will have access to dining. Um, and the way that it works this year because of COVID is that prior to coming onto campus, we're actually asking students to sequester or kind of quarantine themselves 10 days prior to coming to campus. And then once they get here, they'll be on a 14 day sequestration period once they're here on campus. And part of that includes three meals a day um, right here in our dining hall here at colleges nine and ten students will be entering into the dining hall main doors six feet apart and they'll be going in getting their meals from our fa fantastic dining hall staff and then they'll be headed through the multi-purpose room and if you recall earlier we talked about the multi-purpose room is adjacent to the dining hall so they'll be kind of exiting in a different in a different door than they will have entered and that's just to ensure that we are keeping folks safe and distanced appropriately while they get their food. And then after that period of time is over for all of our students, we're actually gonna be doing, um, using a new program called the, the Get App. And you can get your food via, um, via this app and everyone's gonna have it you know, available for download, et cetera. So you can even, those of us not on a meal plan can even order specific things that we might want. But those of you that are on a meal plan will be able to order what you need for the meal or even in between meals. Um, and then the dining hall will transition from instead of kind of a breakfast, lunch, and dinner pickup, they will transition to, you know, being open from the morning until night and you can come in at any time. But again, you'll still use the same socially distant um, kind of av avenue to get in and out of the dining hall, but your orders will be placed through this app. So that'll be exciting to start um, getting to use. And then I just wanted to mention too, while we're thinking about all these different campus resources, 
you know, this is obviously, the dining hall is obviously for people that are living here, but we have so many staff and faculty and, and student orgs, et cetera, that are all still operational. So even our jobs, right, are, are all virtual. And so our advising team that we talked about earlier to all the various campus resources. So in addition to dining, we have, you know, our health center, we have um, our counseling and psychological services, we have care advocates on campus that deal with Title IX issues, we have uh, tutors for any, any subject matter, right? All of, all of those campus resources are still operational, even through COVID, even through the wildfires, they figured out ways to ensure that our students were getting the support that you need, and they will continue to do that all throughout this quarter and, so, and beyond, right? So we wanna ensure and encourage you all to reach out to not only the colleges, but to all of these uh, campus resources that are here to support you in any need that you may have. Okay, so now we're at the beautiful entrance to upper campus of, of UC Santa Cruz that happens to be our own backyard because we are right in front of us or behind you is the International Living Center and our College 9 and College 10 apartment community. So all of our continuing students as well as all of our residential students in our residence halls have this perfect access to upper campus. So Nancy, I was wondering if you could share a little bit about our natural environment that we have here. Sure, so I am not an ecologist or a botanist. I'm just someone who really likes being out here. Um, but I think we are so incredibly lucky to have literally our backyard be a redwood forest, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so this is, the, as Sarah said, this is the kind of gateway, the entryway to what we call upper campus. Um, there are trails all over here where you can bike, uh, mountain bike, you can hike, you can just walk. I think you can even horseback ride because it says, you know, horses limited to designated roads. So apparently you can horseback ride out here as well. Um, I really like to come out here. My office happens to be uh, very close by. So when I'm done with meetings, when I'm done with classes, I just put my hiking shoes on and I come out here and I just go for a walk for about an hour and it helps me decompress. And so I really encourage every student I meet to do the same thing, um, whether you live at Colleges 9 or 10 or not, but Colleges 9 and 10 students are so lucky because they just have to walk outside and they are right here. And, you know, I know nature seems a little ferocious right now in California yeah. with the wildfires. Um, and, but we are really lucky in Santa Cruz to, you know, to be in a place where the redwoods literally meet the ocean. Um, there's so much to do here. There's so much to see. There's so much to take advantage of. We have flocks of wild turkeys wandering around campus. We have deer. Um, in the wintertime, the monarch butterflies make their home in Santa Cruz on their, on their way, I guess, way south. south. Um, and so they're here, you know, anytime sort of after like October, November, December in, into February, February I think. Yeah. yeah. And so um, we just have a lot to offer in terms of the natural world. And I, I really hope that students take advantage of that, especially right now um, when, you know, it's really, it's hard to be isolated. It's hard to be inside all the time. And, and again, we're just really lucky to, to have all of this incredible, beautiful outdoor space that's in our backyard. So we know that this is just a very brief snapshot of the college experience, but we wanted to give you a sense of the place, of all of the resources that we have to offer. Um, there's a lot more to college life than all of this, but this is just a kind of very brief introduction of sorts um, to, to college life. And so we wanted to say thank you for tuning in, and I'm gonna invite us to take our masks off so we can properly welcome you. Welcome, welcome to, to UC, UC Santa, Santa Cruz. Cruz.